three. And with us is Kenny Moore. the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium, just north of downtown Tampa. Tonight we start week five with a primetime matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brandon going alongside Charles Davis and CD. You look at the Colts in this matchup. Their offense is one that doesn't rely too heavily on just one guy. They like to spread things around as best they can. You're right about that as a diverse unit, and they like to run their offense by what they call game plan, meaning each and every week they study the opponent, they probe its weaknesses, and they move the ball around that way. They emphasize who's going to get it based on what they think they'll accomplish in that game. Other teams, they're a system team. They're going to run with that run no matter what. I like this style of offense. It suits them well. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. You know what I did in pregame? I made sure I touched him as he went by. I want a little bit of what he's got. The golden arm from last week. Oh, how much fun was that to watch that game tape, all right? The touch, number of touchdowns, that was at five, five last week, yeah. but zero interceptions. So you think he's due to throw a pick? But I'm betting they continue to streak in this game. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And incomplete to open things up. Brandon, watching their tape from last week, I saw plenty of plays like we just saw there, forcing incompletions. It was key in their win last week. They're hoping the same thing happens this time. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. DeForest Buckner with a sack, the former number seven overall pick. All right, partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass, followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay, and they read the sigh of relief on that sideline. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. Well, able to get the completion, but unfortunately not able to get the third down conversion there on that play. And I like how the defense approached that one. They knew where the first down marker was, and they decide whatever you want to have, you can. You're just not going to get the first down. Excellent tackling right there. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they will be led out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there was also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They're going to look to throw. This would complete to me, Cole Hardman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. First carry now for the former Badger, Jonathan Taylor. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. 
The Colts are the perfect 4-0 to start the campaign. And they've been playing their best football of the year, winners of four in a row. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. And in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They come off a victory over the weekend, but now the quick turnaround here for this Thursday night game. How does that affect how teams like this approach these short turnarounds? Well, wins and losses always factor into, you know, how you're getting ready for the next game. But equally as important when you have the short turnaround, what is your injury situation? Are you losing key guys? And if so, how well have the backups prepared for this? Because you don't have much time to get them ready. They have to be ready before this week in order to play well in this game. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Now we're going to get a timeout. Here's we got an injured Buccaneer. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. They run straight ahead here with White. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll drop to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 36. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll go up the middle with White. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Now the throw here complete on the right sideline, and he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. He'll drop to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And the Colts are going to have it here just past the 25. So a first interception thrown for him there, and that really not the best decision either. Not at all, and that's something he did not do in their victory last week. No interceptions in that game, but this defense, they're able to take advantage of an early mistake. Now let's see if they're going to turn it into points. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Here we go, here we go. Again, it's Taylor. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. 
Got the defense on their heels. Two first downs in a row, and now a pickup of eight. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. As we both know, there's a lot that went into why they made him their first-round pick this year. Part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a win, and the ball is free, Taylor lost it. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids it. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw. It's knocked away and incomplete. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. Kick is good. He needed a little help there from the crossbar, but the carom goes his way. Well, for almost eight years, 64 stood as the NFL record for the longest field goal. That has since been eclipsed. It's now 66, but still 64-yarder. Pretty impressive, CD. Absolutely agree with that because if you drill a 60-yarder in an NFL game, you've got a lot to be proud of, record or no record. And only can even attempt... job there putting that one through the pipes and Tampa Bay trots out there now as the offense comes out here Charles remember they threw the interception last time out but they were moving the football down the field looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points but then the pick ensued and because of that there's no way you can call the last drive a success yes there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one the numbers for him from a week ago. Eight catches, 112 yards. That was a nice job there pulling that one in. Now, this is an offense that will certainly spread the ball around a bit. And this is a guy that defense has had better focus on. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. He'll look to throw. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And, yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it or if it forces you into making bad decisions. That's their goal. What? Let me see this bullshit. So... Uh... Oh, what an idiot. Passer penalty there, CD. And we know that these pass rushers love to get after rookie quarterbacks, but they've still got to do it within the scope of the rules. And that time, the hit came just a little bit too late. And the official wouldn't think twice about pulling his flag on that one. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Three-nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Johnson. 20! And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. They have been struggling to put points on the board so far. Well, you don't want to lump it all on the rookie quarterback. He's definitely the root cause. And all the rookies, they have those learning experiences in their first year. What they're hoping for is that he can learn on the fly, work through his struggles against his defense, and at the same time, still find a way to put them in a position to win. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. 
And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. They'll set up to throw. Caught on the slant. Touchdown, Colts. Nicole Hardman, his third touchdown now on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they have found their guy, their future at quarterback. And they should feel that way. It's obvious he's a big part of why they have such a good record this season. You're right about the bright future. Association, a bright future for the franchise, too. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They're looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily when you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. They haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. As mentioned, this one of the hottest teams in the NFL, riding that winning streak into this one. But now playing here on Thursday night, do you think that this helps or hurts their momentum? Well, ordinarily, I'd say it hurts the momentum because now you get that short week. But when a team's playing as well as they are, it actually allows them to down focus and only worry about themselves and less about their opponent. So when you're playing well, you just worry about the things you're doing well and let the yeah, opponent deal with them. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. On oh, is the punter Townsend as he gets this one away. Agnew now to return. Who with a juke. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that officially. Give him 15, and the Buccaneer offense will be set up well as they take over. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They defer to White out of the shotgun, and he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down, and you know what offenses want? win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. It's a gain of 11 and the Bucks have a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First down, here's White. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Second and four. And his throw here is incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you definitely got to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. And Boyd has it over the middle. 
And he is going to have a box first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. They'll set up a throw. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. Quitty Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. Well, last game he had two sacks. Got another one here picked up right where he left off. Brandon, he spent the entire offseason working on new moves, new techniques, trying to add to his arsenal of pass rush moves. He's certainly paying dividends of what we've seen so far. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. They'll look to throw here. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 38. Quinny Pay able to record his fifth sack of the season. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's the game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in down. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yeah. And now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And now a stoppage. And looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. They go to the ground again with Taylor. Seven yards there and a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now back to throw. And this throw incomplete. Oh, the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Out of the gun now on third down. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Pitts. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. Just a gain of a couple there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Four yards on the punt there, no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll look to throw. He's got Otten. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. On 
the draw. Here's White. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and ten. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Back to throw. It's caught by Mike Evans. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 42. Looking to throw. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. Our score 10 to 3 with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. From the 35, back to work on second and four. Back to throw here. Forced out to his left. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Uh, you got a young quarterback. You know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. 14 yards that time for number 14. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll look to throw again. And a little floater there is incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this is caught by Evans. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Look at Mike Evans' way again, and he's got another one. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Again, he'll drop to throw. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Jamin Davis. And the Colts are going to have the football at their own one-yard line. And they'll come out with a three-tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. So I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say we'll see what happens. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And now the half not quite over yet. This is a live football on the miss. 
So we come to halftime here with the visiting Colts taking the lead to the locker room. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. As far as the early games go, we'll be watching that one in Houston. The Texans in for a fight as they'll square off with the New Orleans Saints. Excellent games in the late afternoon window as well. One being over in Arlington, where it'll be America's team, the Cowboys, taking on what should be a very tough opponent. And lastly, on Monday Night Football, this will be one to tune in for as they've got a good one lined up between the San Francisco 49ers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. On now to a look at the next gen stats in that first half for the Colts. And even though they've got the lead, they're likely going over ways they can improve the running game as they didn't find a whole lot of success in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Bucs, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Second half straight ahead from Raymond James Stadium. Both teams finishing up their halftime adjustments. So for the call, let's get and rejoin Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Second half, ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. So here are the Colts to take over. They're working on a four-game winning streak, and they lead this one as well right now as they start first and ten. Although a jet sweep to start the drive. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. And inside give to Jones. And he takes this up right near... play here's second and four they'll look to throw this one completes Alec Pierce and they'll get him down on the other side of midfield so from Buccaneer territory now it's first and ten at the 49 yard line they give to Taylor out of the gun. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. 66 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. They go play action here on first down. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Devin White defeating the offensive line and getting to the quarterback. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. They'll drop to throw. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. They get 15, but they still needed a little bit more. Fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Taylor. Shreds it with a stiff arm. It's first and goal after they rip off a solid chunk of yardage in the ground game on a risky fourth down call. T 
Taylor is going to take this one in for a Colts touchdown. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Gay is on for the point after. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. A 10-play drive that time, and it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken in at the three. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. They make their second half debut here. And things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles. That touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do. And I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because they don't get some kind of points here. The next drive, that could make this a free possession game. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It'll go down is a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. He'll drop to throw. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Boy, you just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the years. There certainly is, and probably way too much. Because now, he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game. Go to the press conference, meet it head on, and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today and you'll be ready for the next game. And if he can do that as a rookie, that's a great sign of maturity. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. 90 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. He'll look to throw. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. Touchdown! Kyle Pitts, 19 yards away, and the Colts take a three-touchdown lead. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker, sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns and 21 points. Scoring summary, three play drive. And it was the tight end Kyle Pitts finishing it all off on the touchdown reception. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken in at the three. Now a hit and a loose football. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. 
and the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secured. A lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Here's White. They set up the screen. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it breaks up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And here's Rodgers on the return. Now a hit and a loose football. Take it and right down Broadway. And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Bucs. Well, you know, you can't get all the points back at once, but baby steps a good start. A start that was sorely needed because this team looked like they might be out of this one. But getting a touchdown, getting back into it, gives them hope as they move forward. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. So not only the combo, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. Here comes Jonathan Taylor and his teammates. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone. And now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They're going to look to throw, escaping the pressure right. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from him. An incomplete. Now it's third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They'll set up to throw. He's got a man open. It's Chase Claypool. And he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now he dumps this off over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Touchdown, Indianapolis! Chase Claypool, 45 yards. And the Colts get another third-quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. And three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was finished off by the Chase Claypool touchdown catch. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. 
This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And they're able to get this one across the 35. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. They'll set up a throw. And that one not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Out route and the ball is caught by Godwin. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Back to throw again. This is White on the screen. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. To the sideline, and he's got it. They say the feet are down. Yes, the line judge says they're in. That'll be a first down. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and ten. Now back to throw. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. They'll look to throw here. Airing this one out for Evans. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. They'll look to throw. And break, the tight end's got it. And he is going to have a box first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. They'll look to throw again. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Second down and three. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And his throw is incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And they'll get him to the ground. And he has another first down at the Colts 17-yard line. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He's got Otten. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Two yards left on second down from the nine. They will run with White out of the shotgun. 42 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. He wanted that end zone. Powerful running, but he couldn't quite get there. And that's going to really make him upset. And right now, there's no way he's letting a coach take him out of the game. He's going to want the ball again, so he actually does get into the end zone, hopefully on his next carry. White. Touchdown, Buccaneers. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept him out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on him. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Rosas good with the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. 
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one fielded at the five. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Well, the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives, and a two-score lead. I think here now you just, you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. I say, <laughs> run the football. You've okay, got the ready? lead. Well, let's watch it and find out who's right. Ready. First and 10, Taylor now to the 43, second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. The offense on third down tonight, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and six. That's caught left side to tight end Pitts. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? So frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. On second down, it's Taylor. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. I know the game's not over, but there's got to be a sense of satisfaction right now for the guy carrying the football a bunch today. 99 yards, and he has enough time to go on the century mark. Well, you got to give it to him again, right? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You're not worried about losing yardage here. You're not worried about any of that. You just want to get him to the promised land for every runner. 100 yards or more in a game. They turn to Taylor on fourth. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hey, hey, hey. Looking to throw. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 23. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. They'll look to throw here on first down. Right side, Claypool's got it. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Second and two. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. 115 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run here with Taylor. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his sixth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Colts add on to their lead, and they are also closing in on a fifth straight victory. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers 
you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Back to throw now on first down. Flush to his right, and he wisely will throw that one away. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Open man has got one. It's complete. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review of this being inside two minutes of play. So the officials and the folks in New York got a second look at this one, and the call is going to be overturned. Second and six toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. And they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. He'll drop to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Colts are going to take over with the football. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Here we go. Here we go. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brand, I think they're the type of team that just looked in the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So for the Colts, their strong September has carried over to October as they move to 5-0. And, oh. and they'll get a few days to savor this one before they take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, for Tampa Bay, they drop below 500 to 2-3 and three with a loss. And they'll try to turn it around next week as they head to Atlanta for a matchup with the Falcons.